Today was the longest stage in the Tian Yoda Cup Tour of Qinghai Lake 2013. We've got a variety of people that have turned out to watch the start of this 227 kilometer long suffer fest. These guys are not going the distance, but we're going to talk to a couple people that are going to be going the distance. People have still got heavy legs, and we're going to check in with one right now. We're looking right now at with Massimo Graziato. Do you like the race so far? Yes, uh, the, in China is uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it's a proud, good race, good organization, a uh, good uh, racer. Good. It's uh, beautiful. Super. How are your legs feeling? Everything okay at altitude? How's the lungs? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> good? Good, yes. Uh, 3,232 meters, and we were going to continue all the way up to two over-category climbs, climbing all the way from Qinghai Lake to Tianjin. We started Qinghai Lake into a crosswind, going across the lake effect to the first sprint at 20 kilometers. Then we wound our way up a valley with a nice tailwind over the first category climb. Tailwinds galore until we hit the second sprint and over the top of the last climb and down to the finish in Tianjin. The race leaders are at the front of the pack already and ready to take things into the crosswind. The weather's looking threatening and there's the gun. Off they go from Qinghai Lake. The weather over the lake was really cloudy and nevertheless they were fighting their way into a crosswind. It was only 30 kilometers an hour at that time as they were on their way to sprint number one. Fields of yellow clover and bees galore were keeping everything interesting and beautiful for us, but at the first sprint we had... The first sprint was taken by Sacha Madolo. Second place was green jersey winner Luis Mas Bonet. And third was Giorgio Brambilla. After sprint number one, things did not get any easier for the peloton as the winds picked up to 40 kilometers an hour and brought in rain from the lake. Local rider Liu Biao was off the front right here. You can't see him, but the peloton is still continuing to chase. He's from Qinghai, and he's doing his best to make everybody proud. Everybody was climbing up with a very nice tailwind. The gruppetto was completely solid, packed with everyone. Every person was there and looking for the King of the Mountain points, which were coming up. We've got a really close race with King of the Mountain between race leader Samad Pusadie and Hussein Alizidie. Here comes the local. Look at the sheep buying their approval. This is great. He comes across the line. Excellent. He's got it. There's the sprint for second, and again, Pusadie takes it. The riders were lucky to leave the rain behind, but the wind stuck with them and continued to blow the peloton down the mountain at 75 kilometers an hour. Everyone was winding out 5311s as the pace was infernal. 60 kilometers an hour along a nice wide brand new highway with absolutely nothing around it. On their way to sprint two, racers were looking for their lead out men. Here we go. Who's gonna take it? Looks like number one is going to be Lipo Forlin, second place was Giorgio Brambilla from the first sprint, he got second, and David De La Fuente, former yellow jersey, got third. A breakaway form but was caught in the crosswind on the way up to the King of the Mountain points, which happened to be taken by Yvengi Nipponekshi. He crossed over the top first and was on his way down to the sprint finish with a 10 kilometer downhill and 10 kilometers of flat. The peloton was still together, but with one kilometer to go, two people blasted off the front. Once again, Sacha Madolo and Maximilia Ricchese. He was off the front and working hard. Here you see it from 300 meters. They're still going good. He's looking, everybody's looking, but where's the peloton? Right behind him. Will they make it? They've only got 200 meters to the line. Can they hold it off? It's looking difficult. Here comes Lamprey, here comes Felipe, and who is it? This gives you a better view of just how that sprint unfolded and how close it was that they were caught. Second place went to Maximilio Ricchesi with such Ralph Matska took third, right ahead of the 60 rider peloton. Right now we're gonna have a word with Sacha Madolo. With the altitude, it was rather difficult, but I still felt I had great condition today and was helped by my teammates to catch back to the group if I dropped back to climb at my speed. I'm not a climber, but in the final sprint, I have to again thank my team for getting me into position and protecting me from the headwind in the last K. 
Stage winner Sancha Madolo was up to get yet another. Second place, Maximiliano Ricchesi. And third, once again, third place, Ralph Matska. Bottle of champagne. Samad Pusadia. He also took the blue jersey for best Asian writer, as well as taking the king of the mountain by one point over Hussein Alizadeh. Once again, Louis Masbonet is still in green for the second day in a row. And there is our yellow jersey right there, Samad Pusadie, throwing the flowers off to the crowd. The wind continued all day long and it was sometimes in their favor and sometimes not. But nevertheless, it'll probably be around still tomorrow because we're going to be going on stage five from Tianjin to Shihaizhen. We'll see you tomorrow for Cycling CN. I'm Sean Nagel. See you tomorrow.